Hi, this is Michael Johnson, and our show today is Conversations, and what a guest we have. We have an Herbalife legend with us today. He is a man who started at the right hand of Mark and actually was Mark's mentor. Would you please welcome Jim Rohn. Jim, welcome, Thank you. buddy. Thanks, Michael. What a pleasure, what a pleasure to pleasure see you. Me. Tell us about your road in life, Jim Rohn. Tell us about your path. How did we get here today? Well, I, I started out in uh, Idaho farm country, and uh, when I was 25 years old, I got introduced to health and nutrition and uh, became a distributor. And uh, with the protein drinks and the vitamins and the minerals. And, and the name of that company was? It was Nutribio. Nutribio. Yeah. Bob Cummings, the old movie star, was part of that company. And um, so I was a distributor for several years, finally became an executive, took the product to Canada. And... Um, Finally, uh, from that experience, went into uh, giving public seminars, and I did that for several years, and I was doing one of those seminars in Los Angeles 30-plus years ago, and in my audience was a young man, 19 years old, mm. and his name was Mark Hughes. So, what an incredible day for me, chance to meet Mark Hughes. We became good friends, and I showed him uh, what I was doing, the product I was selling, and he said, I want to do something similar. And He had some other experiences that he went through, and I was there. But uh, I watched him as he finally put the products together, and I was there when he recruited the first distributors in 1980, almost 30 years ago. And I've been here ever since. What do you think Mark learned from you? Uh, part of it was uh, marketing, uh, a good marketing structure, and of course the value of the products, it being in health and nutrition. And um, then he said, what I want to include is not only good nutrition and people using the products, a good marketing structure where they can do well if they want to represent the company, but also what you have been teaching me um, <laughs> before I started the company, and that's personal development that the ultimate goal in life is not what you get, but what you become. And Jim, your personal development, your ability to help others with their personal development is, it's legendary. You're known in the personal development industry as one of the greatest voices, one of the greatest minds. What do you think are the most important things in personal development? Uh, one is personal philosophy, you know, the conclusions you've come to based on your experiences. Experiences growing up, going to school, experiences uh, out in life, experiences uh, getting married, having children, experiences, um, you know, working on a job, um, conclusions you've come to uh, that guide your life for the future. And of course, one of the best decisions I made back in those early days, 1955, was becoming a distributor for this uh, product Nutribio. And uh, sometimes people have uh, gone to seminars, they're all excited, but where do you put it? How do you put it to work? Right. And for me, the best, best place was network marketing, like Herbalife, where you can start small, use the product, get other people to use the product. And from the word that spreads on people getting unique results on the product, um, get those that are interested, started in the business, and uh, help them change their lives as well. We are going through a rapid expansion phase in our company. And, no doubt about that. And Jerry Satanovich once said to me, you know, when, when I was very new in the company, that we're going to go through a wave. And I didn't know what the heck she was talking about, but she was sage. She was right on the money. And we have seen daily consumption, the use of the product, every single day become that wave, which distributors have opened up their minds to an equal footing of recruiting and retailing. Um, I think that what we stumbled with a little bit was a kind of a recruiting only mentality, and now we've got a base in it. And you said in a meeting one time, and I was there, you said from stage, that a lot of people selling product, and you said a little product, but I think what you meant was a lot of people with customers was a stronger foundation for this company than just a lot of recruits. Can you take off on that just for a second? Absolutely. Well, ultimately, um, 
that's what you have to come to. And some, of course, using the marketing system, uh, recruiting first and then using the products. But uh, if we can start with a product base of customers, um, that's the strongest way to build it. And it would be impossible to do it any other way uh, than Herbalife has done it and get to 70 countries in uh, 30 years. So we're, we're about to unleash um, what we call the Herbalife Decade, 60 more markets. That's our goal in 10 years. Um, taking the company to 10 billion, uh, that's our goal because we see penetration rates in mature countries, countries like Mexico, the Latin market in the U.S., Taiwan, where we are now per capita selling six, seven, eight, nine dollars per cap, and our global average is below a dollar, so you do the math. You go there, you can be six times larger than you yeah. are now. I mean, and we're almost three billion now. We're, you know, we're, little, we're, we're moving in towards that zone. Um, so 10 billion is very achievable. So the, the concept that we're putting forth, and there's a question coming here, I promise. There's, the concept we're putting forth is that we want to go wider, which is yeah. 60 more markets, and go deeper. And the deeper is more daily consumption. And Mark's dream always was to make sure that, you know, Formula One, this canister, was in every home of an Herbalife customer, of an Herbalife distributor, of an Herbalife supervisor, everybody. And this became the way you start your day. Yeah. So in your experience in this business, have you seen companies do what we're doing the way we're doing it? No. This has been just extraordinary. And... Uh... What did I say? A market of three billion people at the honors when I yes, was there? Yes, yes. And that's about and, what uh, we're in now. We're a little under three yeah. billion. So uh, I said we're a little bit behind. Yeah, we're doing okay, but we're a little bit behind. Yeah, because the market that. is so staggering. It is so big. But even in the United States, uh, there's more overweight people now than there were when we started selling the product almost 30 years ago. I read today that obesity is responsible for over 16% of the new healthcare claims and over 25% yeah. of all healthcare claims. And we're going through in the United States as a worldwide show, but we're going through this big drama about medical care mm -hmm. here. And it keeps ringing in my head that if we could only get them on Herbalife, if we could only get these people, you know, healthier. Yeah. So tell your story. And every I mean, 10 pounds makes a difference. Bob. Oh, absolutely. So they tell your especially story. Especially for a woman. Uh, if she's 10 pounds overweight, the scale of having uh, medical problems tips just a little like this. If she's 20 pounds overweight, the percentage goes like this. Uh, 30, 40 pounds, and it starts almost getting off the wall on a long list of health problems by being that much overweight. It's just, it's, you know, what it is in the David Heber, he was mentioned in an article in the LA Times this week yeah. uh, talking about anti-inflammation and obesity and, and the problems that take place. And I keep coming back to what Mark created in 1980. And what he put forth was an opportunity to give you a great meal with good nutrition, yeah. lose weight, gain weight, you know, use the product for the, its proper nutritional value, and you can change someone's life. Let's segue to another subject, Mark. Mm. There's, a lot of, there's a lot of distributors who were personal friends of Mark, who had time with them, and there's a lot of distributors who were highly inspired by Mark. Do you have any good stories? Do you got any good Mark stories for us? Mark was unusual. You know, right away that first year that all of us were around Mark, the first distributors and myself, um, we could tell this is an unusual kid. You know, his mother died when he was 19. Mm. And he had all kinds of challenges as a young, young, young child, and uh, never graduated from high school. And with all these challenges against him, but he was really a believer in health and nutrition, and uh, come up with the idea of herbs, and that's where we got the name Herbal Life. And uh, he was just extraordinary. Probably more dedicated to other people's success than his own if you wanted to say something unique about Mark Hughes. That's kind of a constant that we yeah. hear about Mark. But in telling his story, I say he started with his grandmother. She was his first customer. So he gave her the product to try and she got great results. And as a result of her getting good results on the product, she got him another 25 customers and that started Herbalife. 
So here's a good little note to make. Herbalife was started with a gift, not a sale. Then there was a point soon after that, I'm sure he had 50 customers. And in 20 years, up until the time he died, he went from 50 customers to 50 countries. And there's no more uh, extravagant, unbelievable success story coming from his background than to say that in one sentence, from 50 customers to 50 countries Amazing. in 20 years. Amazing. We just bought a manufacturing facility uh, in Orange County, uh, south of here, about 50 miles south of Los Angeles. And there are interesting historical perspectives to that. The gentleman who started this company um, helped Mark with his first product from the pallets into his car. Mm. He told us that he worked at DNF. Mm -hmm. And he said Mark would show up with his car, and because Mark didn't have any money at the time, they cash and delivery. And he had formulated this product, and Mark would come the first time, and he'd put it in the front seat of the car. And it was probably for his grandmother's friends. Now no it's all starting it. to make sense, and then he'd yeah. drive away, and he'd show up two or three days later, and he'd fill the whole inside of the car. And then he, they said two weeks later he would fill the trunk and then the inside of the car and he'd drive away. And a month and a half later he's, got, he's pulling a trailer. And so he's got the trailer, the trunk, the inside of the car. And I'm thinking that this must have been grandma yeah. and her friends. And you're so on the money that it starts with that complimentary mm -hmm. opportunity. And it's one of the things that we're driving distributors to open up is sampling, is to give people a shot at the product so they get the feel good of our product, they get the feel better of the results, and then they become customers and daily consumption sets in place. And this is where the next decade goes for us, is this deeper penetration in the marketplace of a great nutritional product and this opportunity that goes forward. What do you say to a new distributor about this opportunity? Yes, get everybody you can using the product as quickly as possible. And then it's easy to invite someone to a meeting or to uh, some kind of program where Herbalife is being presented. But uh, that's the way Mark started. Once he got you to use it, he said, no, you've got to tell your neighbors and you've got to tell your friends and you've got to tell your, especially your family, the people you care about, you've got to tell them about this product. And um, that has never stopped. Right now, of course, it's exploding and being amplified and finding unique ways to do that. Yeah, we, we talk about the four buckets here, the product, the business opportunity, the brand, and the image of the company. And you exemplify all those things. When I, mm -hmm. when I look at you and I think about you, the product results that you've had, and we go to the business opportunity. And this business opportunity is what you school people about so well, that you talk to them about motivation. Give us just a piece of Jim on motivation and inspiration. Well, Herbalife's the best place for a, a person of average means to start with limited capital and limited time and see if you couldn't become an entrepreneur. And an entrepreneur is simply somebody that's hired somebody to help you do the work. And if you're in that position where you'd, you know, find somebody to help you do what you're doing, now that's the chance to become an entrepreneur. And with Herbalife, you can start as a customer, then become a distributor get other people to do the same, and uh, it's just a matter of starting and growing and developing. But isn't it remarkable when we look back at those early films, Mark was talking about five billion already, right? He had that kind of vision, he you know? And we weren't, you know, to a billion yet, or we weren't to, before we did, I think, uh, 500 million, he was already talking about. Here's how we could do five billion. He's just, he stretched his mind way out there, and. Uh, and took everybody with him. And the stories now in Herbalife, after almost 30 years, are just absolutely so remarkable. Well, that spirit that you have continued, uh, that inspiration that you've continued, grows. I'm going to tell you a story that you may have heard me tell from stage a few times, is that when I first started in Herbalife, which is six and a half years ago now, which kind of boggles my mind, um, my wife was a little nervous about the schedule uh, at our company because we work a lot of weekends. You know, we have extravaganzas, we have STSs, and so it takes you out of the home Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I was in Las Vegas in that June meeting six and a half years ago, 
And my wife said, there are going to be a lot of Sundays that you're going to be away. We, we, we were talking on Sunday morning, and she had just been with the kids for a little spiritual renewal and stuff and was missing to me. And you were speaking at the time, and I was listening to you side stage. Hmm. And it was beautiful. It was about renewal, and it was about redemption, and it was about building a business, and it was about the opportunities you as an individual have and the discipline you put forward. And it was about integrity and honesty and things that are way beyond any religion or spiritual. They're core soul, core values, a mission of life. And I said to my wife on the phone that day, I said, Honey, don't worry. I'm in Jim Rohn's hands today, and the spirit's mm. good. Oh, and wow. so we are... We are blessed to continue to have you involved in our company, in our spirit, and, and you know, one other story, and I'm sorry, I'm doing all the talking here. This is supposed to be you, conversations with you. We were in Brazil recently, and we talked to young distributors who are up and coming, and I always ask them about the discipline of their day. What do they do? You know, what do you do when you get up? Do you, what's your first, this young lady said to us, well, I spend 30 minutes listening to Jim Rohn every morning. I listen wow. to his tapes. I put him on my headset. I go for a walk. I go for a run. And he inspires me for the whole day. Hmm. Does that inspire you? That inspires me. <laughs> to know that you touch so many lives? In Brazil. You know, in Brazil. I came from farm country in southwest Idaho. And uh, who would have thought that I would have met this extraordinary man and would have been part of Herbalife all these years? And now with you and everybody else that's uh, taken on a leadership role and helping us grow around the world, it's just mind-boggling for me. I'm just like an awestruck kid yeah. every time I think about <laughs> it and talk about it. How could it happen to me? But it did, and I'm glad it did. Yeah, I remember when I got my first customer and my first distributor. I remember when I first uh, did my first meeting. I stood up and my mind sat back down and uh, left me speechless, and scared to death. And <laughs> where do I go from here? And uh, so I've been through all of that. And uh, I learned the skills and the disciplines that altered the course of my life, my fortune, uh, my health, uh, everything about my life. So it's easy to share it now with other people since it did it for me. You never know who's sitting in your audience. Whether it's an audience of five or six people in somebody's home or an audience of 50 or 60 or 500, you never know who's out there. So do your best. Who would have thought Mark Hughes, 19 years old, sitting in my seminar? And now I've got something so unique and dynamic to spend the rest of my life doing along with you. But thanks to uh, this young man that appeared in my seminar, and I met him when the seminar was over. We became good friends, and the rest is history. And I think that's a perfect place to close conversations. Wow. History is behind us yeah. and ahead of us. We're the on next our way. decade's going to be special. Thank it's you, be special. Jim Michael. Rohn.